on to the next one. Maybe have a sip first. If it's not too hot. Mmm. It's perfect. This one's really weird and really scary. Okay. In middle school, my friends and I were very into anything scary. Scary movies, Ouija boards, etc. We were young and didn't take things like this very seriously. For example, now I would never use a Ouija board, which I wouldn't ever either. We were looking for a Ouija board and bought a cheap pink colored one at Toys R Us. We used it and didn't get much out of it, but my neighbor heard we were into that sort of thing, so he lent us the one he had in his attic. This was an old, very creepy looking Ouija board. From how I remember it, for sure different vibes from the plastic pink one we had bought at the store. We would sit in my downstairs living room and all use it. It would reply and we thought it was entertaining and funny. I didn't really take it seriously as I assumed someone was making it move. We got a name, age, death date, cause of death, all the basics. Then we would just chat with it. Each new day that we would use it would be the same being that we were talking to. We would ask dumb questions about if we would marry the boys we were dating and other middle school type questions. I don't remember a lot of specifics about exactly what we asked and how it responded, but it made it clear that it didn't like my boyfriend at all, and oftentimes only would reply when I was the one asking the questions. There are maybe five of us that would play, but because it was at my house, I was always the common factor in who was there. Over time, the being started to get short with us, almost angry. It would get mad when we tried to put the board away and just overall got more and more aggressive. So one day we decided to search the internet to see if we could find a real person who matched the description. We found a MySpace account in the same first and last name, as well as age. Even creepier, the last time the account was used was right before the date of death. Wow. We never talked to the board again, and were seriously creeped out. Thankfully, nothing bad seemed to come after this, but overall, a very creepy experience, especially looking back on it. I bet. That's really, really creepy. Same girl, different story. In eighth grade, we had a big project called the eye search. You would do it on whatever topic you wanted, but it had to be at least 10 pages, including an interview and different sources. During that time, I watched a lot of ghost hunting shows. So as a way to make that my homework, I decided to do my paper on ghosts and demons. My best friend did hers on the same topic. Everything was going great and I was really enjoying the topic I chose. I had found someone who did ghost tours around Haight Street in San Francisco, as it is known for having many different haunted locations. My friend and I set up an interview with him and then were going to go on one of the tours after. The interview went well and he told us about things he had experienced more recently. By the time the tour was going to start, it was dark out. We walked around a park that had some of the pathways made from old tombstones. It was known for being haunted by a man looking for his dog. Right as we were being told about the story, a dog barked. We didn't see a dog anywhere nearby, and like I said before, it was at nighttime, so it would have been weird that someone was out playing with their dog at this time. We didn't think anything of it though, but little things like this kept happening. Nothing crazy, but just weird coincidences. We had gone through most of the tour with the haunted locations only being a block or two from each other, and so the tour guide explained that the next location was a bit farther away and that it would be a longer walk, but he would let us know when we got there. We had been walking for a while, and all of a sudden my friend says to me, Ew. Look at that creepy guy over there looking at us. I looked and I didn't see anyone, so I asked her where she saw him. She looked back and didn't see him again. She had seen him in a place that he wouldn't be able to just disappear from in that short amount of time. But again, we didn't think anything of it. As this conversation was happening, we were walking down a steep sidewalk, and I mentioned to my friend that I was feeling really lightheaded and that my knees kept giving out. Right as I mentioned that to her, the guide let us know where we were. He explained that a man was shot running down the street we were walking down. The exact location he died was exactly where my knees went out and I felt lightheaded. 
The location of the shooter was exactly where my friend had seen the creepy man. Gave me chills. Then the guide brought out some equipment to communicate with. He turned it on and passed it around. No one was getting any response, but as soon as it was handed to my friend and I, it started beeping and lighting up. I'm assuming this is like a spirit box. My friend and I were the only kids in the group. Everyone else was well into adulthood. It is said that spirits communicate more with the young, so it would make sense for us to get more activity. The guide told us that he has never seen so much activity on one of his communication tools than he saw when either of us held it. Wow. 